All right, today we have a quick video on one of my favorite topics, which is how long to cure your 3D printed models, in this case, miniatures. Uh, I made a video a week or two ago where I talked about a curing time I used for this curing station for miniatures using this resin, and people freaked out. People were like, oh, it's way too long, it's way too short, that's insane, you're a maniac, you don't know anything, you're an idiot. Because it's the internet, and people um, on the internet are nothing if not helpful but also kind of jerk sometimes. Uh, but there are also some nice people too that made sane comments. But this is just a quick video to let you know how to, how to um, figure out the curing time for your specific models. There's three factors um, that you need to know. It's the type of resin you're using, the type of curing station or setup that you have, and the size and type of your model. Uh, the resin is the most important because all the resin manufacturers, like I'm using Soraya Tech, you know, gray mixed in with some Tenacious, uh, all the manufacturers have websites. If you buy it online, you buy your resin online, I'm, I'm guessing, or, or from a place that has a website, go on the manufacturer of a resin's website, look up the spec sheet for, this, for the resin that you have, and it'll list what, they, what the recommended curing times are. For the Soriatec Fast Gray, the recommended curing times for the average size curing station is one to two minutes. Uh, I find that my this bigger curing station isn't that I have now. This is it's awesome. It's the uh, Frozen Lunacure. It's got a giant turntable. I could cure you know full size LP records in there. But I don't feel it was as powerful. I had a smaller setup before the Elegoo Mercury that was real small and mirrored on the inside, and the lights seemed very strong. That would cure a mini in the you know in like a minute to 90 seconds. You know the recommended cure time. This one I give it a couple extra minutes because one I don't mind my miniatures being a little a little bit overcooked because I put tenacious in them and they already have a little bit more flex than they'd have if it was just normal resin. Uh, but also, I just it's just what I take you know, to get your miniature done. If you're having a hard time knowing when your miniature's cured, I feel you. Uh, when I use gray resin, I can tell my miniature's cured because after a couple minutes of curing, take a look at it, look at it. it's a little less gray, a little more uh, yellowish white, like it's been dried out a little bit. Not too much where it's like dry and cracking and brittle, but you can just tell it's when it, it seems like it's been cured. It's like the, a chemical reaction has taken place. Also, the weapons will be a little less flexible. Um, and before, with miniatures, before I um, cure them, if I get the miniature like this and I and I, and I I wiggle it, it'll give a little bit of give or the, where the miniature will lean forward a little bit on the thing without breaking off. After I cure it, that give is a little bit less. Uh, you can also, the miniatures are harder. So what I do, there's a metal plate in there. I will drop the miniature on the metal plate and it'll, it'll have more of a, of a ding, of a, like a rock on metal sound than a, you know, softer, less hard thing on metal sound. Uh, and also the, the best way to test your models, I guess would be to try and scratch and find a place where you can do it or get a test model, scratch your model uh, with your fingernail. If you can't scratch it with your fingernail, uh, it's pretty much pure. <laughs> Sorry, unless it's a big round one. And that's the same thing. That's the second thing that comes in is, um, or second thing is your type of carrying station. But the third thing is the type of model. If you're, uh, if you're, if you printed something much larger, bigger, around, thicker, uh, it's going to take longer to cure. But also, you have to be careful because if it's too big around, you're going to have to put a drain hole in the middle, or else you're going to have a ball of uncured or semi-cured resin in the middle, middle of your print. And after weeks and months, it will blob up and eat through, and it will leak out the bottom of your um, miniature. So that's something to keep in mind. But yeah. Main thing is look up the type of resin you have, see what the recommended thing is, uh, curing time is. Take into account your curing station. Is it big? Is it small? Is it powerful? Is it not powerful? Uh, and you can kind of tell. You'll, you'll overcook things where like, you know, you'll you'll tell you can tell overcured model because it's it's really less gray or less the color it was, and you'll get like cracking around the edges and the things will just become brittle and fingers and stuff will break off. And then the third thing to take into account is the size of your model. What I would recommend is going to your resin manufacturer's website, getting the range for the curing time they have. Let's say it's one to two minutes. I would start at the lowest level, start at one, cure the model, check it out, uh, see how it is. Cure it at two minutes, take it out, feel it, see how it looks and feels and then just go up in minute increments and find your sweet spot that way. It's gonna be different for every type of resin, for every type of curing station, and for different sizes of models, uh, you know, models and prints. But over time, you will, you will get your sweet spots. Write them down in a notebook or a journal or email that information to yourself. Uh, I always find that helpful. And in, that's about it. I, I would really like to know what your guys' curing times are and what kind of curing stations you have and what kind of stuff you're printing. So please, in a comment, leave uh, how long your curing time is and what type of curing station and what type of resin you're using. I, uh, it, that'd be super helpful for everybody actually. So yeah, do it.